Hello everyone and uh, from me a happy new year. I hope you guys can see my slides and uh, I know we're 22 days into the new year but while we still have hope in our hearts let's collectively look forward to the possibilities that lie ahead and as many of us enter the new year with a desire for positive change often placing health and more specifically diet as part of our goals and there is no better time than now because science alone is such an exciting space right now, but the evidence is showing us that which patterns are working best. And while we are taking a look at the short guide that I'm gonna be showing you guys today, it is a combination of my own personal journey with food, but it really hinges on the rules that science teaches us. And this presentation is actually inspired by several books I read over the holidays. Uh, to mention a few, I read Jason Fung's Obesity Code and Gene Stone's Hawks Over Knives and Abigail Eunice's Tips for Successful Weight Loss. And one thing seems to be true, that there are many ways to skin a cat and more especially if the diet is medically indicated. Some incredible results have been documented and I'm no stranger to the power of food. But while we ponder on what changes we can do, the answers you are looking for could be right here. And to live the kind of lifestyle that you want or the one that you imagine is something we all have to be working on. And while I realize that personally, I may be having trouble giving up certain foods, I quickly realized that even the most perfect diet will have gaps. And my journey is basically finding that balance. But remember, if a qualified medical professional has pres prescribed you a specific way of eating to manage a condition or disease, food has a powerful way to bring healing. So please follow um, what is being asked of you. But tonight um, is not about one specific Neolife product. Um, we're going to be looking at how you can incorporate these changes to your entire lifestyle. And these changes are hinging on these small things that we can do from a day-to-day -day basis. So this is a bite-sized guide um, that will provide us with tools on how we can apply this knowledge to better ourselves. And what a better way to start by targeting nutrition and feeding our bodies. And I'd like to start here by taking a look at near life scientifically based whole food supplementation. This, this products are geared at targeting all of our specific needs. We have products designed for him and her, for mom and dad. We have products tailor-made for um, the young and old and quality nutrition for um, athletes. So um, athletes that are looking for good quality nutrition, we cater for all those people. And while we're busy caring about taking care of our bodies on the inside, we have long been beginning to understand the imperfections that exist with every diet and the need for good quality nutrition. And the answer to this question is quite simple. If I know that my diet is imperfect, for instance, or I have a restrictive diet because of my medical condition or my allergies, or maybe your desire is just to become the best possible version of yourself, Neolife has this expansive nutritional range, which has solutions for anyone looking to take care of themselves or their loved ones. And we are reminded that our bodies are these miracles. And what a better way to incorporate a trusted product whose legacy spans over six decades. And while we care about what's happening inside our bodies, the next thing that we should be turning our attention to is to how to deal with the outside, right? So our skin and our appearance. And guys, I think this really matters. So nutrients would be that Neolife solution sourced in one of the most beautiful places in the world. I love, love, love that the formulations are driven by science. And these products are designed to suit various skin types. And there is some heavy bias on my end because I absolutely love nutrients. And nutrient deserves to shine because the products are organic and scientifically based. So we begin to feel good on the inside because we're taking care of our nutrition and taking in the right supplements to fill the gaps. And we're taking care of the outside, providing our skin with all these good nutrients that is required for us to take care of ourselves. We should be thinking also about the spaces that we spend most of our time in, which is an extension of our health.
This is the natural extension of healthy living by assimilating this particular lifestyle. And this picture really isn't complete if we think of golden. You see, golden has been focused on being environmentally friendly since the 1960s. And they were committed to making products that make your life easier, but providing you with concentrated products that stretch the power of the money in your wallets by lasting across several months, depending on the size of your household. But what's most incredible about Golden is that we've been making the world a cleaner and safer place, and that's pretty cool. And while the picture is complete, this allows us to think and allows us to unlock a new way of thinking about our neolife businesses, most importantly, and more especially a different way of living. But today we'll look at some known concepts of what it takes to take care of ourselves from a dietary point of view. So we all know that eating is a big part of life, right? But you have, have you ever thought about how you eat can afford, affect your overall health? And nutrition isn't just about avoiding junk or going on a specific diet. It's about giving your body the good stuff it needs to function properly. Think your energy or your immune support and just feeling good in your skin. And depending on whom you ask, healthy eating may take on different forms. And it seems that everyone, including healthcare professionals, wellness influencers, coworkers, family members, has an opinion on what the healthiest way is to eat, right? But we need to think of nutrition in a way that we can incorporate the knowledge that's out there. Think your nutrition articles that you read online that can be downright confusing with their contradictory and their unfounded suggestions and rules. And this doesn't make it easy for you and me to simply want to eat healthy and finding the way that works best. And the truth is healthy eating doesn't have to be complicated. It's entirely possible to nourish your body while you're enjoying the foods you love. And after all, food is meant to be enjoyed, not feared, not counted, not weighed, not tracked. My presentation will attempt to cut through the noise and explain what healthy eating means and how to make it work for you. But before we dive into what healthy eating means, it's important to explain why it matters. First, food fuels us. It gives us energy and delivers the calories and these nutrients to our body that, that our body needs to function. And if your diet is deficient in these calories or one or more of these nutrients, your health may suffer. And likewise, if you eat too many calories, you may experience weight gain. And people with obesity have a significantly risk of illnesses like type 2 diabetes, obstructive sleep apnea, and heart, liver, and kidney disease, which sounds really scary. Additionally, the quality of your diet affects your disease risk, um, how long you live, and your mental health. And while diets rich in ultra-processed foods are linked to increased mortality and a greater risk of conditions like cancer and heart disease, diets comp comprising mostly of whole nutrient-dense foods are associated with increased um, disease project, uh, protection and longevity. So that's what we've been looking for. And diets rich in highly processed food may also increase our risk of depressive symptoms, particularly among people who get less exercise. There's research that's showing us that how those things are linking together. And what's more, if your diet is high in ultra processed foods and beverages like fast foods or fizzy drinks and sugary cereals but low in whole foods like whole grains vegetables nuts and fish you're likely not to be eating enough of these certain nutrients which may negatively affect your overall health and that's where quality supplementation will come in to plug in those those key gaps but healthy eating doesn't have to involve a particular diet Rather, it means prioritizing your health by fueling your body with nutrient-rich whole foods. So, do you have to follow a specific certain diet to eat healthy? In my opinion, I would say absolutely not. Although certain people need or choose to avoid particular foods or adapt or adopt certain diets for health reasons. And most people don't have to follow a specific diet to feel their best. And that's not to say that a certain way of eating or certain eating patterns can't benefit you. They absolutely can. For instance, some people feel healthiest when they follow a low-carbohydrate diet, while others thrive 
on high carbohydrate diets, and even now the on-trend plant-based diet. And in general, eating healthy has nothing to do with adhering to this diet or a certain dietary rule. Eating healthy simply means prioritizing your health and wellness by fueling your body with nutritious whole foods. And what's incredible at Neolife is that our supplementation is based on whole foods. And the specifics may be different from each person, depending on their location, their own financial situation. Your culture can impact how, how you follow a specific diet, society, and our taste preferences. But another component of healthy eating is dietary diversity, meaning eating a variety of foods. So following a diet that's rich in different kinds of food that supports your gut health, that promotes a healthy body weight and protects against chronic disease. Still, eating a variety of foods may be difficult if you're a picky eater, you have a, a, a medical condition, or you're already on a restrictive diet. And that's where you would need this supplementation to help you um, keep up to scratch, right? And although you may not be enjoying to try um, new foods, in this case, you would try these new foods one at a time. So if you don't eat many vegetables, start by adding your favorite vegetables to one or two meals per day and build from there. And research shows that the more you're exposed to a food, the greater the chances of you growing accustomed to it. And now that you know why healthy eating is important. Let's cover some nutrition basics, which I think a lot of people are very interested in. So macronutrients are the main nutrients you get from food. Things like carbohydrates, fat, and protein, and we hear about that a lot. And generally, your meals and snacks should be balanced between these three groups. And in particular, adding protein and fat to a, a fiber-rich carbohydrate makes dishes more filling and tasty. I'll make an example. If you're snacking on a piece of fruit, by adding some cheese um, to that particular snack helps you feel fuller than if you were just to eat the fruit alone. And that's how you get um, these combinations. However, it's fine if your diet isn't balanced all the time. Counting your macronutrients and following a set macronutrient plan isn't necessary for most people, except athletes or people who are uh, seeking a specific body composition or those that need to gain muscle or lose fat for medical per, uh, uh, reasons. Plus, counting macronutrients and obsessing and staying uh, within a certain macro range may lead to this unhealthy fixation with food and calories and can, be dis and can lead to disordered eating at a later stage, which can be very dangerous. But it's important to note that some people, they may thrive on these diets that are lower in carbohydrates or higher in fat and protein, or they may thrive on diets that are low in fat that are high in carbohydrates. However, even in these diets, macronutrient counting typically isn't really necessary. For example, if you feel your best on a low carbohydrate diet, Simply choosing low carbohydrate foods like non-starchy vegetables, proteins, and fats more often than a high carbohydrate diet will probably be enough. But you still need to be considering about those potential gaps that you're leaving out. And that's where sourcing good quality nutrition will come into place. And one of the best ways to improve your diet is to cut back on ultra processed foods. And you don't need to avoid processed foods completely. In fact, many healthy foods like shelled nuts, canned beans, and frozen uh, fruits and vegetables have been processed in a little way in one way or another. And in contrast, we have these highly processed products like your fizzy drinks or your mass-produced uh, baked goods like biscuits, uh, candy, sugar cereals, and certain box snack foods contain little, if any, whole food ingredients. And these items tend to pack ingredients with ingredients such as high uh, fructose corn syrup, hydrogenated oils, and artificial sweeteners. And those are the things that we look for um, that could potentially cause harm to our bodies. And research links diet, high, diets that are high in ultra-processed foods to a greater risk of depression. 
and heart disease and obesity and many other complications. And suddenly we are hearing about the answers that we've been needing to the problems that we're facing on a day-to-day -day basis. That food has this power of changing of how our chemistry works. And on the other hand, we hear of diets that are low in these foods and high in whole foods and nutrient dense foods have the opposite effect, protecting people against disease, lengthening someone's lifespan, promoting overall physical and mental well-being, and just pro providing you that with that lifestyle. And thus, it's important um, to prioritize nutrient-dense foods, especially your vegetables and fruits. And when you conceptualize healthy eating, your first thought might be about calories, and I understand. And even though calories are important, your primary concern should always be nutrients. That's because nutrients include protein, carbohydrates, fats, vitamins, minerals, and that is what our bodies need to thrive. So nutrient density really refers to the amount of nutrients in the food in relation to the calories it provides. And all foods contain calories, but not all foods are nutrient dense. I'm going to say that again. All foods contain calories, but not all foods are nutrient dense. Take eggs, for example. While egg whites, if you think about them, are lower in calories and fat compared to whole eggs or a whole egg with its um, yolk inside, they also contain significantly lower amounts of essential nutrients such as iron, phosphorus, zinc, and choline. And whole eggs, on the other hand, so a full egg just with the yolk and the, the whites, provides a higher percentage of these nutrients. And that's simply because it's more nutritious. So the yolk has all these things that we are also looking for. And let's make another example so that you can understand what nutrient density talks about. I want to use a chocolate bar as an example. A chocolate bar or a box of your favorite um, biscuits or your cookies may be incredibly high in calories, but lack vitamins, minerals, protein, and fiber. And similarly, foods marketed as diet-friendly or low-calorie. They may be low-calorie, but lacking in those important nutrients that we are looking for. So those are the things that you should be looking out for. Plus, although some nutrient-dense foods, such as uh, numerous fruits and vegetables, are lower in calories, many, like nuts, full-fat yogurt, egg yolks, avocado, and fatty fish, are high in calories, and that's perfectly okay. And just because a food is high in calories, it does not mean that it's bad for you. On the same token, just because a food is low in calories doesn't make it a healthy choice. So you have to be thinking about these all these moving parts and making those small uh, changes. But as a general rule, try to mostly eat foods that are high in nutrients like protein, fiber, healthy fats, vitamins, and minerals. And these foods are simple to conceptualize and understand. These are your vegetables, your fruits, your nuts, your whole grains, your beans, your fatty fish, your eggs. And that's where you would like to start. But should you cut back on certain foods and beverages for optimal health? In a healthy diet, it is the best to do to restrict these certain kinds of foods. And decades of research links ultra-processed foods, which I touched on earlier, to negative health outcomes, including increased disease, disease risk and early death. And cutting back on processed meats, sweets, ice cream, fried foods, fast food, highly processed packaged snacks, is a smart way to improve your health and lower your risk of certain diseases. And those are my favorite foods. However, how do you completely avoid these foods all the time? Instead, try to prioritize whole nutrient-dense foods. And I touched on them. These are the whole foods that we can access with minimal processing. So fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, beans and fish, saving you um, a lot of money in the long run. But leaving these highly processed foods um, for special treats. And foods like ice cream and candy can we also be part of a healthy diet, a well-balanced, rounded diet. They shouldn't be a significant part of your diet, but they can be part of a healthy diet. And how to make healthy eating work for you. Food is one of the many puzzle pieces of your day-to-day -day life. Between traveling um, between work and your family, your social commitments, your errands, and many other daily factors that you have to do, Food may be the last things or the last of your concerns um, in your mind. But the first step to following a healthy diet is to make food one of your priorities. 
right? And this doesn't mean that you have to spend hours meal prepping or cooking elaborate meals, but it does require some thought and effort, especially if you have um, a particularly busy lifestyle. For example, if you are going to the grocery store once or twice per week, and if it's allowing you to, um, it makes sense for you to shop in that way. It will help to ensure that you have healthy choices in your fridge and pantry uh, on a week-to-week -week basis. In turn, a well-stocked kitchen makes for choosing healthy foods and snacks much easier. So you need to be thinking about the things you are bringing into your home um, and uh, consuming on a day-to-day -day basis. And when you're uh, grocery shopping, thinking about the fresh and frozen fruits and vegetables, these are good options for you to incorporate into your healthy diet. And if your preferred uh, protein source is uh, legumes, nuts, um, chicken, eggs, fish, tofu, there's so many options. The more you explore, the more you'll find different foods. And for a nutrition slip, simple snack, things like nuts, those suffice as snack, um, or peanut butter, hummus, olives, and dried fruit. These are things that uh, healthy things that you can incorporate on your day-to-day -day basis to ensure that you are healthy. And if you don't have a good relationship with food, I am pretty sure you are not alone. Many people have disordered eating tendencies or eating disorders and may not know it. And if you're concerned that you have one of these conditions, it's critical to, to get that addressed and to develop a healthy relationship with food. You have to have the right tools, food restrictions, fat dieting, and self-prescribed notions like getting back on track won't help but may be harmful. And working on your relationship with food may take time, but it's necessary for your physical and your mental health. And I would like to close this particular short guide like this. For a realistic approach to healthy eating, prioritize plant-based foods like vegetables, fruits, beans, and nuts. And there's power in, re in repetition incorporating them in every meal and snack. Cooking at home diversifies your diet, even if it's just for one or two homemade meals per week. Regularly visiting the grocery store ensures that your kitchen is stocked up with nutritious, fresh ingredients and recognizing that dietary progress, not perfection, is key and small changes like cooking homemade meals, vegetable-rich uh, meals, can have this significant impact. So eliminate the concept of cheat days, opting instead for a balanced approach that includes all foods in moderation. So we can enjoy all the foods that we love to eat, but we need to be considering the moderation and the sizes that we are consuming those foods. Minimizing sugary drinks, that's a common one. We know that um, sugary drinks are not good for us, choosing filling nutrient dense options that build a healthy eating a pattern around whole foods. And whole foods are really, really important because we may not be able to access them due to modern day uh, food processing. So the foods have changed and we are now um, negating all those important nutrients that we'll be getting from the food. And that's the reason why a place like Neolife can offer you solutions, targeted solutions for every me member of the family, young and old, to provide nutrients good nutrition to plug into those gaps and um, stay hydrated with water and you can add uh, fruit slices to add flavor to your water and respect your food preferences by avoiding foods you dislike in favor for healthier alternatives. Thank you.